Ustream. Right, so you're watching JKK from JKK Mobile and Chippy from UMPCPortal.com on the live convertible netbook. What do we call it? Shootout? It's not really a shootout. shootout. It's a big shootout. comparison. <laughs> a big comparison of the uh, of the convertible touch note UMPCs netbooks, netvertibles, tablets, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and tonight we're going to start off uh, in in this section with the the Villiv S7, which has been sent over from um, Villiv, uh, Yukong Technologies. It's arrived today. JKK has already done an unboxing, which you will find on his website, jkkmobile.com. But I got mine this afternoon, so I'm actually going to do another unboxing and uh, do that live so that we can go around the device. You can see the device um, live and ask questions in the chat channel. So if you're watching this on Ustream, there are chat, there is a chat channel going on in the background, so I might be answering questions on that yeah, as well. And for the uh, people watching the recorded view, I think uh, Steve can switch to my video now. So we co we are recording this with three different cams, but actually on the live session we have even more cams. So you will see better next time uh, on live if you are watching the recording. That's right. We've we've so rigged up a um, video relay from JKK in Helsinki. Uh, that's recording. It's going out and recording on Ustream. But if you're live in the session, you get to see him zooming as well, which you don't yeah, see. Yeah, zooming stream. and high quality, high quality, bit high, much higher high quality actually. Yeah. So, okay. if you if you want to see that next time, join the live session. That's the advantage of joining the live session. All right, let's get into the uh, the Villiv S7, and um, I'm guessing most of you will know what the the S7 is. Um, but for the benefit of people that are joining uh, for the first time, let's go over the uh, the device and as I am as I uh, tear it open I'll give you some uh, some details let me just get the specifications link up right should be seeing my video now JKK confirmation on my video showing okay good right let's tear into this Philip s7 so this is uh, it's funny actually it's Almost the same size as one of the early netbooks, the Asus uh, 701, uh, 2G and 4G. 7 inch screen, uh, 1024 by 600 resolution, running on an Intel Atom platform. But this is not a netbook platform that this is running on. This is running on the Menlo platform, which uses the Silverthorn CPU. It's slightly different than the one you find in netbooks. Uh, it's optimized for um, power efficiency um, plus it also has some hardware decoding of video capable uh, sorry in the chipset so um, we might be able to get to demo that later so the idea about this device is that it's long battery life and very lightweight so where most netbooks are 1 to 1 1.5 kilos in weight this one is just 800 grams so it's like 20% lighter than the lightest netbook out there, which makes it really good uh, when it's convertible because you can use it in tablet mode. Uh, you can use it in a lot of mobile scenarios. You can hold it in two hands and walk around with it. Um, let's get in. I've got two boxes here, but I think the first one is the white leather case, which is so gay that I'm not even going to open it. <laughs> <laughs> it's for girls, for sure. Not even for gays. It's it's. it's we, we, I might stuff. do that at the end of the uh, end of the show. Yeah, don't open it even. <laughs> so I'm going to put most of the stuff to the side. There's nothing much in here apart from a USB transfer cable, power, which I'll take that out. I might need that. And we'll go straight into the device. So we've we've had hands-on with this before on a number of occasions. First time was about a year ago, I believe. No, more than a year ago. A year and a half ago when we saw the first prototype at CES, and then a year ago we got hands-on at uh, IDF. So, there it is. Very, very thin. Very, very lightweight. And let me just hold it up to the side of a 10-inch netbook, and you'll see how much how different that is in, in sizing. The thickness is about half, well, maybe two thirds the thickness of a of a netbook. The weight is around um, half to two thirds. 
and the sizing is about oh, I guess it's about half the volume of a, of a netbook so full QWERTY keyboard uh, and this is a, a much smaller keyboard than you'll find on a 10 inch uh, netbook so we'll, we'll go over that in a bit more detail in a minute and the big feature here is obviously the rotating screen as I said 7 inch screen there 1024 by 600 fairly high brightness uh, if it's the same as the 7 inch screen on the X70 JKK you might be able to confirm that is it uh, it is, it is uh, higher price uh, higher brightness than typical I just uh, uh, did a post view a few hours ago I was testing outside comparing to T91 it's it's much brighter than T91 and less glare so which that means that it's, it's better outside than many other devices less glare you mean uh, less uh, less glossy yeah less glossy all oh, yeah. right okay it'll be interesting to to test out though um, before I have a look at the uh, let's take that all off make it look nice before we have a look at the keyboard in detail let's just zoom around the device give you an idea of the ports and the features that are uh, on this so nothing on the front there nice smooth finish I have to say the plastics feel really quite nice actually it's very solid build no creaking at all no uh, I can't um, bend it in any way really solid so this is typical yeah. Villiv uh, quality Good here quality. Yeah. Uh, power on button with lock as well two USB 2's a mini USB now that's micro USB which is used for uh, data transfer uh, there's actually USB um, uh, some some hardware inside there that actually kicks off uh, through autoplay a file transfer program you've seen it on USB transfer cables prob probably SDHC card then we've got the uh, antenna which you on some of the pictures you might have seen before it was a huge antenna but on the 3G versions um, I didn't even mention did I this has actually got 3G built in this is a 3G antenna now I don't know how useful that's going to be because the same thing is on the uh, X70 and I rarely see any difference when I use the antenna on the uh, X70. On the back it's clear. On the left hand side full VGA uh, port there. They've managed to squeeze in proprietary video out port which gives you S-video, composite and component video out. No digital video out as far as I know. It's all analog. Then yeah. there's um, microphone and headset and this is a 9.5 DC input probably the same as on the X70. Flipping it over then He's looking for the SIM card slot. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's under the battery. There you go. There's the SIM card slot. At the back there. And this is the battery bay. Um, the battery capacity is 34 watt hours, and that compares to the 27 watt hours of the X70. Uh, so this has got more battery capacity for the same hardware, uh, and Villiv are talking about n up to 9 hours of uh, in-use battery life so with uh, with videos that work off the hardware that's included in here uh, and that will be um, only if you're using something like H.264 and the proper codecs you might get nine hours basically in general use I think you should be looking at five to six hours easily maybe seven hours and if you're offline maybe eight hours for ebook reading or something like that so let's go over the uh, the keyboard here try to make sure that I've got enough enough light. So the keyboard's fairly fairly small. I'm just going to zoom out and put it on the table and I'm going to try and compare it with um, another device I've got here because I think the keyboards are exactly the same in terms of sizing. Yes they are. This is the Clevo TN70M and even the um, mechanics on that one feel the same and on the TN70N um, which I've had for about a month I actually can just about tup type, touch type on it like you could with the EPC 700 series and 900 series Small, slightly smaller keyboard yeah. but still just about touch typeable if you were prepared to put in a little bit of practice some smaller keys for punctuation marks a cursor and a very small right shift key on the right hand side it's something you would have to get used to but the advantage of having these squashed up it means there's more space for the alpha characters uh, in the main part of the keyboard if you look at something like the Kojinja SC3 where they try to keep all the keys much the same size the um, the alpha keys uh, certainly aren't as big as the ones on these I don't believe. Oh, we'll have a closer look at that in a minute. 
everything's there function keys up to f10 and then uh, alt for f11 and f12 so you full screen on firefox you'll need to press alt f10 for that uh, there's also brightness controls and the usual bluetooth off volume up and down no that's wi-fi off bluetooth up uh, volume up and down volume mute and that's about it on the top here here's some um, the usual set of leds and then on the top right and this is a an important aspect of the S7 that you need to be aware of is the touch pointer. So this is the mouse pad here. It's very small and it might look like it's in a really, really strange position. But let me just zoom out and show you why it's there. The idea is that if you're actually typing like that, you can just very easily move your finger up and use it like that. So you could use the touch screen, but in fact, if you use your index finger, it's pretty quick to use the, uh, the mouse pointer on this. Second, second reason it's there is for stand-up operation as well. So if you're standing up with two hands you can just about thumb type on this. It's not really optimized for thumb typing but you could tap out the URL and a few passwords and you could also use the, uh, the mouse pad like that. So that's the reason it's up there. It also allows the device to be a lot less deep as well. So going to the screen, around the screen we've got a pivot button, the menu button, menu is just the start button, uh, Windows start button, pivot actually rotates the screen in 90 degree increments, we've got a webcam on the top left, I think 1.3 uh, megapixels, and stereo speakers which I hear are pretty loud JKK, is that right? Really loud, yeah, I really enjoyed the, enjoyed the loudness, I'm not hi-fi guy like like you uh, but I really like loudspeakers so yeah that's good outside on, on speakers and internal microphone was great and so on good speakers I like them that's good because um, uh, if there's, not, there's nothing worse than wanting to watch a YouTube video and then you can't, can't actually hear it and uh, yeah. I, have that, I have that problem on the, uh, the U820 because the stupid little speaker on that just isn't powerful enough to, to hear from well you, you can't even hear it if, if there's any noise in the room so anyway, that's yeah. useful to have that. Let's just drop the battery in now. Easily drop it in, and we'll see if there's any uh, any juice left in it. And we'll boot <laughs> that up. So, quick word on uh, specs again. Then, so this is a 32 gigabyte SSD model. Villiv designed their own SSDs. I don't know who it's produced by, but um, it's pretty fast. It's not top of the range SSD but it's pretty fast and you'll notice that uh, it will be faster than the hard drive version of the of the S7 yeah. um, so that's important to notice to note also you get the, the rugged um, oh yeah <laughs> it's pretty loud <laughs> not super quality but definitely loud it reminds me of the speakers on the Gigabyte T1028 um, yeah you get the ruggedness that goes with an SSD uh, slightly quieter operation and in theory some battery life savings but you probably wouldn't notice too much um, 3G included on this one Atom 1.3 gigahertz processor 1 gigabyte of RAM Windows XP home on this one so I'm going to put this on the table and zoom the cam in so that you can actually see the UI here let's quickly zoom in because Villiv have done a uh, slightly different uh, UI than, than we saw on the S5 and X70 and um, it's Adobe Air based uh, user interface basically allows you to put um, icons on the screen for uh, starting up applications it's a very thin uh, very thin layer over XP to be honest and I'll be honest I think most people are going to switch that off after a few weeks it's it's very good for demoing the device and really does hide XP nicely, but uh, it's debatable how how much functionality it really brings in the long in the long term. Do you, yeah, you, if you it, agree? If it had more integrated stuff like like the the operation and uh, web browser and so on, that that might be something. But really, it's more like a like just a basic overlay with some cool functions. Yeah, I don't I rarely use it. It does give you access to um, switching off and on the webcam, the 3G. You can also adjust the brightness from here as well, from the top. You get a little brightness uh, slider there. Uh, it gives you battery life indicator, which 
again is this um, silly percentage only figure that you get from various devices not giving you the actual real world um, estimated battery life in terms of like minutes and hours which is I don't I don't like that too much yeah me either yeah uh, as far as application suite is concerned uh, the main app uh, that you want to run if you don't run the UI is the Vilive manager which gives you access to turn on and off the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth which is a combined device you can't switch those on and off separately unless you turn the you go into device manager I think and turn the Bluetooth radio off separately but um, it's not very easy to do camera and the 3G modem on here you've also got I see you can switch between line out and the internal speakers so it's not an automatic switch when you put your head when you put your uh, headphones in it's interesting uh, or maybe you can force it to both I don't know this we'll have a maybe have a look at that LCD brightness is available this hasn't got the uh, haptic feedback that the X70 has got and the S5 has got certainly not on the village manager anyway so no uh, no vibrating screen when you touch it and no am I right in saying no fill of keyboard JKK nope I haven't seen that okay that's interesting because when you switch to uh, tablet mode here clearly there's no keyboard so you're gonna need to install something like uh, inscribe or um, what's the zero? Oh, yeah it is there it is actually there on the on the desktop it's on the desktop. Let me have yep. a look. Vilib software soft key keyboard. Got it. Yep, it's there. Good. I was getting a bit worried there that they'd done a tablet type device with no keyboard, which was a bit stupid. Yeah. So no haptic feed. No haptic no, feedback no, on no it haptics, though. No, and actually I don't see any way of closing the keyboard. <laughs> well, you can use the hide button. Yeah, but there's no special button for opening and closing the keyboard hmm yeah. okay oh, maybe it's looking through the apps uh, let's just uh, hit that menu button all programs just going through the apps to see if there's anything special on here there's demo versions of Microsoft Office uh, they've installed in the Windows Live Suite which is used for because photo gallery and um, the other apps can be quite useful um, nothing else of note there. So let's give you a quick demo of the uh, the pivot button. Basically, gives you the ability to uh, rotate the device in 90 degree sec segments. Uh, JK, no, JK, <laughs> James Kendrick, not JKK, JK from JK on the Run had a video today he, he's liking this uh, tablet mode on the on the s7 and 1024 by 600 is one of the um, smallest resolutions like 600 wide that you can actually start to get useful web browsing on in a in a portrait mode so certainly using something like Google Reader is really really nice and this is pretty lightweight for one hand 800 grams is actually my threshold for a one hand one-handed device I've always said that anything over 800 grams tends to get a little bit weary, weary on the hand certainly if you've got uh, wimpy arms like me <laughs> <laughs> um, oh the on screen keyboard resizes which it doesn't do on the X7 T oh, I, didn't use, I, I rarely use portrait mode so for right. me it wasn't so that's, that's nice thing. that's good to know so the pivot uh, button will actually get you back in 90 degree segments but you can always do the control alt up arrow which is is the uh, Intel driver shortcut key for rotation. So yeah, and you can make icons on the desktop, or, or even uh, there are some specific sof softwares to do that nicely. So yeah. So let's have a look at the uh, the keyboard. Um, sorry, the uh, mouse button. So the the mouse pad itself is very silky, silky finish. It's nice for running the hands over, the fingers over. Left and right mouse buttons is something you'll have to get used to. Um, what happens with me is with left and right mouse buttons, I tend to be using double clicks and uh, the double click and drag sort of feature. Yeah. There's a lot of features you can. Is this a Synaptics device, JKK? It's Synaptics, yeah, with so, with the uh, side scrolling also. Yeah, I can see the side scrolling and the bottom scrolling. 
so there's a lot of things you can do with this I don't know if the touch touch layers have any um, gesture support uh, doesn't look like it my screen is a little bit of cleaning as well it's a little bit sticky after the uh, covers been on it but I can sort that out so looking pretty solid looking good looking uh, the, the white finish is something you'll have to decide decide yourself whether you like that I think they should have done it in black um, there's still no word if they're not going to bring the black one at all or not I, I tried to get answers and, and, and I didn't so right see what happens they, are, they still have pictures of black ones on the net so right I really hope they will do that matte plaque that would be perfect so many people complaining the uh, the shiny black ones or or the and the stupid looking white ones <laughs> right yeah let's see if I can get this um, Wi-Fi connected up but uh, while someone I do that chat if it's someone asking on, on the chat if it's fanless so yes it's fanless there's no fan there's no exhaust uh, ports or, or vents or whatever it's uh, fanless and uh, doesn't get that warm I think you have just used it for five minutes but mine has been in charge for a few hours and right now been using it all the time and it doesn't get get warm so yeah Good I don't know this I don't see any um, I don't feel any warmth build up so far but as you say it's only five minutes uh, in what I want to do is uh, just get the Wi-Fi connected here um, uh, they've got the taskbar on auto hide get rid of that connect to the LAN and we'll do a, a couple of quick just browsing speed tests it should be fairly fairly swift this one um, do, 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 do. that's interesting I can't even see my Wi-Fi device just turn it off on and Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. No Wi Fi. I'm only seeing Bluetooth. Come on. And refresh network list. There we go. Right. And a chance for a bit of typing. People have been asking about the Wi Fi. So it's the same as on, on S5 and, and X70. So Marvel as SD uh, 8686 SDIO adapter. And I have no problems with Wi-Fi here so but I really have I have really good systems here and I haven't yet yet used it elsewhere so that's quite a satisfying keyboard actually it's a very uh, nice cl yeah. click, click to it I think it's really clicky the, the travel is much higher a bit bigger than on uh, EPCs but it's actually quite a lot smaller than the EPC T91 or even a 701 keyboard so it's kind of funny how they did that so this is more like a uh, feels like a, a big keyboard but the, the keycaps are smaller big travel like maybe three millimeter almost three millimeter travel yeah I could write I could bang out a blog on this no problem at all it's uh, good enough yeah. for a blog no problem on a plane. I'm writing this as I say it. No problem on a train. Yeah, that's keyboard's not bad at all. Um, time will tell, but it looks pretty good. I'd say it's as good as the, the keyboard on the TN70, which I, I quite like. So one of the smallest um, keyboard sizes for touch typing. Anything smaller than that and you're in trouble. Of course, I've got fairly slim fingers, so you've got big chubby sausage fingers. You might have, might have, uh, might have a little trouble. All right, we're going to close this part of the session down. This part of the UStream recording, uh, going in, going into a Q&A session now. Uh, so thanks for watching this section of the um, of the presentation. There'll be more on UStream. So if you're looking for part two, three, four, five, oh, I don't know how many we're going to get through tonight, but uh, go to ustream.com. Uh, search for UMC Portal and you should find all the videos. So let's just close this section off now. Thanks for watching. Thank you.